Yishem Adonam of Matar of the Lama, Hashem's name will be blessed forever and ever. Shalom, everybody. We dedicated this Torah class, the evil eye, number 11, to for uh, Fuash Lema, speed of recovery. For every name you want to mention, please do it now. And for all the Israeli soldiers, um, Hashem bring them safe home, because Hashem is healthy, and all, all the kidnapped and all the prisoners, uh, all those who support Israel, Bezat Hashem will have Fuash Lema, Brocha, Vatzlocha, Amen. Um, you wanted to say something? Also in honor of uh, to the Right, right. And, and yeah. the, for, for the sake of the soul, Leilu Nishmat. Herschel David. Herschel David. Ben Eliyahu Akohen. Ben Eliyahu Akohen. That's not a shame. Tov. We've learned so far a lot of stuff. The very last thing we talked was about the half shekels. That even Hashem put in the Torah in order to avoid Ayn Ara, um, to count half shekels and not people and then calculate it later. We have a lot of questions that I want to present before you today. Uh, one of them is, is a one, can one give Ayn Ara on himself? Why to himself. And if so, in which way? You can give to others. Other can give to you. The question is if one can give to himself. Mm. That's number one. Second question is, uh, we learned that the, even Satan, the Satan, was able to give Ayin Ara. Okay? To Avraham Avinu and so forth and so on. There's another source that says that the Malachim, the angels, was jealous at Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, there's some part of the tefillah that we sang in Aramaic specifically. So the Malachim won't understand the angels, don't understand. So they won't jealous at us. So obviously the next question would be, is they, they, they have evil inclination within them. They, they, um, they can wow. jealous. How wow. is it possible? They don't eat, they don't drink, they're angels. They don't have they're the above angels. and beyond all these kind of th things. So how is it possible that the Malachim, the angels can jealous? <coughs> so, Bezan Hashem will try to answer these questions. But, my, my, my next question to you is, <coughs> yeah, you can even sit in the... Uh, this is only for VIPs over there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, guys, Sheila, question. Uno pregunto. <laughs> Listen to this. The Luchot Abrit. What are they? The Luchot, what are the Luchot Abrit? Luchot Abrit. Or Luchot Abrit. What are they? Tablet. The two tablets. What's the real shape, by the way? They were real tablets. Everybody, if, you, if I let anybody to draw Luchot Abrit, huh? Cur curved on Cube. top. Uh, on uh, the yeah, it's a big mistake, the curve. Cube. Cube. It was like squarish. We learned that for the measurement of the arc and how they fit in, it can't be with the curve. So at some point, I don't know, it's come, I think from, it comes from Christian theology, mm -hmm. theology or something like that. As, uh, originally is um, straight, like, 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 like a square. When you hear the story, or you read the story about Moshe Rabbeinu coming down the mountain, breaking the two tablets. <coughs> what was the reason Moshe Rabbeinu broke the tablets? <laughs> the, the golden calf. Egel Azav. The golden calf, right? Everyone you ask him, you tell them golden calf. Read Midrashim. I read the Talmud. I see other reasons for it. Guess what's the reason? Another reason. Take a wild guess. Why the tablet were broke? Take a while, guys. Because of what's the what's the topic of the class? Oh, thank you. <laughs> what do you think I'm referring to? So, how many tablets we got? At least two. At least two. Take two and call me in the morning. How many times Moshe Rabbeinu was up in the mountain? Three times. Now, the first tablets. Were given was given to Am Israel with a great ceremony. The entire world trembled. 
as it says, something we read every morning. Shame'u amim yirgazon chil achaz yosheve pelashet. This is something we read every shachid, every morning. The entire world trembled. They could hear the voice of Hashem anywhere. Or people in Japan, Guatemala, Russia, Antarctica, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the Bigfoot, what is his name? The, the Bigfoot guy. Everybody could hear that. It's the allergy season, I'm sorry. Huh? They, everybody could hear it. Before Bnei Israel got the Torah, the other nation were offered the Sefer Torah, the, the Torah. How they were offered the Torah? Anybody knows? Hashem said, chopped it around. And uh, how? Asked which them, way? Which way? With whom Akadosh Baruch Hu communicated? He said oh, that he went to years. this nation. Is that what he says? Should not kill. Nah, doesn't fit right. to my. Exactly. Nah, I don't know if someone make me upset. I'm going to kill them if you do this. I'm going to. Nah, it's not for me. No, don't steal. Everyone, he just told them what's in. When it's on the t Ten Commandments, it didn't fit to their lifestyle. Right. So they rejected it. To whom he gave? Who went with the Torah or the information before he offered it to Israel? The Kodesh Baruch Hu gave it to... to but uh, with whom Hashem was communicating? I know Moshe Rabbeinu was the prophet. Who else Hashem uh -huh. we would talk with? Huh? Uh -huh. uh, right, Hashem was talking with the prophets of the other nation. They are prophets. He gave them the message. They went with this message to their people. They make a big, uh, I don't know, uh, council or meeting, and they rejected it. They vote against it. Coming back, because Bohu, no, it's not. It's not for us. Who accepted? No question asked. Just let us have it. We will learn as we go. Israel, fine. That will raise question later. So this is just. Uh, uh, an information from the Midrash from the Talmud. The first tablets were given, the Torah was given by Hashem with sounds, great sounds that came from the mountain. They could see the letters flying. They could see the word Zachor, Yom HaShabbat, I am Hashem your God. You name it. Okay? They could see, they could hear those who got sick, healed. Those who got deaf, were deaf before. They healed, the mute was healed as, as well. They, they reply, yes, amen. Wonderful. The second tablet was very quiet, no ceremony. All of a sudden, Moshe is coming down with a new set of tablets. What's the difference? Why, why, why not another ceremony, another great event, some celebration, some drinks, barbecue, <laughs> make it fun. First template, a lot of noise, a lot of, uh, you know, great celebration. The second, quietly. You have any ideas? The first one was made by Hashem, and the second set were inscribed It's by true. Hashem. The first one, but, but still you can do the ceremony. The first tablet was made by a Kodesh Bohu. The second from material called San Pirion, Hashem told Moshe Rabbeinu, dig yeah, where you at your tent, you find it, create it, make it, and he did. And Hashem inscribed it again on Moshe's tablet. Fine. The second one was quiet to prevent the Okay, so don't say something interesting. It says in Midrash Tanhuma, Barishona at first, Vayi Bayom Shlishi, Vegam Ish Alira, Aluchot Arishonot, the first luchot, because there were such public, uh, you know, uh, the great ceremony, public, publication. No, I said this word. Uh, public. Publicize. Publicize. Noise and ma. Something like music. Yeah, someone needs to mute his. Let me mute uh, everybody. Participant. Uh, I'll try to mute everybody. Okay. I don't have time to deal with that, so please, guys, mute yourself. Okay, I found it. I don't want to mute you because I want to let you ask questions. 
like music on hold. It's with that horrible music. Okay. This is the interpreter speaking. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I can't hear anybody. If you're speaking, if you could put your phone up to your mouth so that it would be clear so that I can interpret. Thank you. Are you interpreting? Okay. Okay, so therefore, Ainara, the evil eye, control the first tablet. The second was in a hidden way, quietly, Moshe Rabbeinu all of a sudden coming after he uh, asked forgiveness from Hashem. He pleaded before God. Hashem agreed. Hashem forgave. He came down with the tablet, and the tablet complete, not broken. Going back to the first tablet, broken due to Ainara. Who gave the Ainara? The worshippers of the Torah. Everybody. Who gave the Ainara? What? Yes. No, no, good. good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. There. Okay. Let's see. So. Yes. See, I'm perfect. So our sages offered the following explanation. It says, first, we got Ainara from the angels. It says in the Mahzor, the very ancient Sidur of Vitri, is a student of Rashi. It's almost a thousand years ago. He says, Shelo yishlot bo Ainara velo b'shum nezek sheken bentinat Torah luchot rishonot nitnu from big adol. Big, big deal made out of it. They make big, big deal out of it. A lot of uh, lightning and, and, and uh, thunders. The Malachim, the angels, jealous. Mm. And they gave Ainara. That leads to Moshe Rabbeinu breaking the tablets. As it says, Uva Satan I don't understand. Huh. The angels were created, they already programmed to do this, that, and the other thing. How can they give, be jealous and give an hour? They don't have any... That's, that was, that was, that's my question. That's my next well, question. I, I asked them. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, so we answered that question, Bezal Hashem. And weren't the Malachim well, really jealous of when Hashem says he's going to make out of Things, hold on, let me, let me just... Yeah, things the that you do quietly, there is beracha in it, it's hidden from the eyes, you're good. Malachim gave Ainara, gave evil eye, they broke. So how angel can give Ainara if he's just, you're saying he's like a robot, right? He's programmed. Well, well, created for a purpose. Well, obviously, I'm jealous when Hashem said He's going to create. So that's that. Also? That's that's one one thing, and we will deal with that question by Hashem later. The second answer is from the Sefer Hakadosh of Rabbi Yitzchak Mibertichov. Tadarba. The Sefer is Kedusha Zalevi, and he says the following. I quote. I read it in Hebrew and translate. Aluchot Arishonot, the first tablet, Nishtabru broke. Mehamad because Ainara was controlled over them. Sheshalta baim Ainara. Vze Ainara and this Ainara came from the nations. <coughs> the other nation. So you're referring to human beings, right? Human beings, flesh and blood. But the Machzorvitri points out that this, it comes from the angels. So what is going on here? Here it brings what I mentioned before. HaKadosh Baruch Hu went through all the nations. He offered them. They rejected it. Eventually Israel uh, 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 agreed and they received it. Okay. So we have two sources of Ainara. One is from the angels and one from Umot HaOlam. Baruch HaTo Adonai Eloheinu Malach HaOlam Shehakol Nihyo Bidvoro. Ah, Amachaya. Tov. Omnam. How is it possible? <laughs> Malach given it. An angel can give Ainara. The second question I'm surprised you didn't ask me. The other nation gave Ainara. What are you jealousy? You rejected it. Right. You just reject yeah. You don't want it. You were happy. You said, oh, thank God they're taking it. Let them uh, deal with that. Uh, I'm not bound into too many um, restrictions. 
enough what I'm, where I'm at. And now you're a jealousing? What are you jealousing at? You have any ideas? Regret. Uh -huh. Regret, okay. Regret why? Okay. Special relationship with Okay, very good. So they didn't, they, they didn't realize that before, that if they'll get the Torah, they will have a special relationship with Hashem? Yeah, they didn't expect such a wonderful ceremony. Ceremony, okay. They, okay. The okay. they, they didn't want it, and, and they don't want anybody else to have it. Uh -huh. human, okay. Human nature. Okay, here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 So, I'm going to quote from the Talmud, Bavli Tractate Shabbat, 88, 2. B. Okay, 88, B. When Moshe Rabbeinu went up the mountain, as, as, as to the Malachim asked, why, why human being, what's human being is doing among us? This is a place for Malachim, Kedoshim. Uh, this is uh, VIPs all here only, right? told them he came to receive the Torah. אמרו לו קדוש ברוך הוא ריבוי נושא לא אילום תשע מאות ושבעה וארבעה דורות זה תתקעה דורות 974 generation before the world were created the Torah is already written you want to give that to a human, human being to this guy what's his name Moshe 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 to Moshe what's so special about him you can see it's part of the conversation in Psalms 8, in, uh, in, in Psalms, right? Hashem Adonai Adoneinu, Ma'adir Shimcha Bechol Haaretz, Asher Tena, Ho Decha, Al Hashem, give your glory, give, keep your glory in Shemaim, we'll know how to handle it. Down there, they're going to disgrace your name. So there's a whole conversation which I'm not going to go into what Moshe answered them. Bottom line, he told them, do you have even an inclination? Uh, among you, so you have some, uh, it says you should not kill. You have the evil inclination to kill. It says you should not steal. What are with you in Shemaim in heaven and stealing? This is, what it's written in the Torah, it's not for you. And the Malachim could not answer these questions. So we see from this debate, it's like he's telling you, you don't have Yetzirah, even inclination, therefore you don't need to get the Torah, it's not for you. So they don't have even inclination, how is it possible that they were jealous? In? Jealousy comes from the evil inclination, right? It seems like I make it just more comfortable, more complicated, right? Now, the Ayn Aram, of the other nation, it's another question. What they have to jealous about when they rejected themselves, as it says, Amar Rabbi Yochanan melamed sheichzira kadosh baruch hu kuma velashon velo kibluah. They rejected it till he came to Israel and they received it. So first thing, let's answer the easy one with the other nation. The other nation, it says that in the Sifri and other Mepharshim, that it's not out of jealousy. They gave Ainara out of Hitpa'alut. Hitpa'alut is, I don't know, amazement, mm -hmm. uh, Wonderment. Ma? astonishment, Wonderment. wonderment. They saw the great ceremony, you're saying. The Israelites receiving it with such uh, joy. You know, it was, you probably know that story. It, we, that shows how crazy nation we are. <laughs> it was a governor, I don't know if it was from Texas or from, one of the governors came to visit his friends in Eretz Israel. He went, he went to a tour, probably it was before election or something, and then it happens to be on the Simchat Torah time. So the guy that he met, the American Jew that made Aliyah, took him to the shul to see some of the, you know, uh, dancing and to get impressions and make him involved, right? He took him to shul. I think he was in Yerushalayim, maybe the, the, the great shul in Yerushalayim, the Knesset And then he sees the people dancing like crazy. You know, when the Simchat Torah is the Simchat Torah. 
for hours and they're holding books of Torah. And then he asked him, what are they holding in their hands? Why they not? They don't have free hands. He told them, ah, they're holding the Torah. You see that they are passing the Sefer Torah among themselves. Whoever takes, first he kisses the Sefer Torah, they are holding in the right hand. He saw there is some pattern, there's some, the system works in, uh, in, under some rules. And then they stop, and then again, and kissing, and give for hours. What is this? It says the book of Torah. Oh, the Torah, I heard about it. Yes, for the Tanakh, the Tanakh, the world, only the five books. Nice. What it says there? Oh, the set of law. It says, you guys crazy. I never saw in my life nation that dance with, his, with the laws of, uh, uh, the books of laws. Here, you show people the book of laws of, I don't know, uh, IRS. <laughs> they, they will want to burn it. Any set of laws, they want to throw it out of the window. You're Jewish taking this book with you, dancing in with it, kissing it. In that book, there is curses. There is wordings. When you were in exile, you took it with you to exile, <coughs> to live by it. Not What's only that, we pay thousands of dollars to print it. <laughs> <laughs> Show me any other nation that dance with is uh, the book of laws. There is no such. Do you see a comparison? The Christians dancing with the Bible, uh, the Muslim dancing with the Quran, having special celebration called the Quran Day or something, and they don't. Quran Day. Quran Day. <laughs> the Bible Day for the Christian. We don't see that. You know, the, by the way, if we're dealing with that, there is any mitzvah to kiss Sefer Torah? Mitzvah to do what? Hashem's name. Mitzvah to kiss Sefer Torah. Mitzvah to kiss Sefer Torah. A common mistake, by the way, is that when people touching the Sefer Torah barehand. It says in the Talmud, right, some cloth, some uh, napkin, or whatever. Some, it says in the Talmud, whoever touch Sefer Torah with uh, naked hands, it's called yad, yad, no? yeah. behind, is will be buried naked. Oh my God. So what does that mean? It's going to have the shreds on him. You say shreds, right? The shroud. 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 You have the shroud on you. But you'll be naked from the mitzvah that you participated at that moment. You lose the mitzvah. Finally, they call you to the Torah, either to get aliyah, or to, uh, me, to do agbe, mm -hmm. or to do the glila. Uh, you touch the cloth. I'm talking about the parchment. I'm talking the parchment barehanded. Disrespectful. You lose that mitzvah. It's one of the greatest mitzvot on, 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 on the Jewish uh, Torah. Can you touch the cover? So I have to be through with the cover. The one who stands in the mm -hmm. Sefer Torah must hold the Sefer Torah in his right hand. You can hold it. So either with your talit, it's another reason why you have talit, or you have to hold uh, something, um, some, I don't know, cloth that's supposed to be there and hold the Sefer Torah while they're reading. Um, I'm, I think I mentioned that before. And it's related to the joy. The Jewish people understand what kind of a gift they're getting. They're able to make connection with their Creator on a daily basis. Chaim Kanievsky and other rabbis saying that times of will is when they're opening the ark. And he actually, it's a quote from um, the Zohar. I think I wrote it here somewhere. If I didn't, so I'm going to tell you by heart. There is, there is, there is a Zohar that says that, oh, here it is. Amar Rabbi Shimon. It's a beautiful name, by the way. Kshemotzi'im Sefer Torah, Rav Shimon says, when they're taking out the Sefer Torah to read it, Niftachim Sha'are Shamaim, the gates of heaven are open, and those, these two, three minutes. You see, I don't know if you notice that, the Sefaradim, it takes longer, because they give extra time. Most of Shoshkenazim, what they do, Berich Shmeh, is the tefillah that we're saying. As soon as they finish it, they're closing it and moving the Sefer Torah. But as long as it's open, take advantage because the gate of heaven open. The Zohar says, V'sha'are shamayim shel rachamim, the gates of mercy 
Me'orim, awakening the Ahava, the love from Shomayim. Meaning we have a window of, I don't know, one or two minutes, take advantage and ask for your needs. But if I have to say what it says in the Siddur, plus Berich Shmeh, I don't have time. By the time I finish Berich Shmeh, sometimes in the middle, I'm in the part of Sagidna. You know, there's a part you have to bow. So the Sagidna come in. They're already closing and they start to move. You should take their time for an extra minute. This is a great segula. So they do the agba before the reading, right? So I think we do before. The Yamanat also do before, but the Yamanat don't do agba like uh, the Ashkenazim or not like the Sephardim. Sephardim lifting the entire mm -hmm. case. Ashkenazim at the end. Huh? And the Yamanat living in the Sefer Torah like that and the, that lifting the cleft. Just the cleft. Rather, can you ask for your personal needs on the cleft? Oh. Oh. Thank you. I was going to say, you can do that on your So, so on Shabbat, you're not supposed to ask for your own needs. Except there is a someone that in, in, in a very, I don't know, is very ill or something like that, then you may ask. But other than that, the Kedusha, the, the, the holiness of the Shabbat, will bring itself a, a blessing to the entire week. So I don't need to ask. But take advantage on the middle of the week. Monday and Thursday. So I had a woman ask me, but I don't come th Monday and Thursday to Shul. I, I call only Shabbat, and Shabbat I can ask for my needs. So I tell her, I'll give you advice. Come on Monday and Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> come once. Can you ask once. She really wanted to ask for something. Can you ask come for once, the make efforts. Huh? Can you ask for the needs in the community? Absolutely. Okay. And also you can ask for the, the things in Kedusha, for example, to become a greater scholar, to understand more Torah, to do more chasadi, mitzvot, this thing you can ask. Yeah. But not your personal needs. Parnasa, livelihood, you're not supposed to ask and on Yom Shabbat. Yom Tov, you're not also supposed to ask for oh, this kind of stuff. Okay. Yes, But, unless it's part of the tefillah, because part of the tefillah, we have part tefillah of the, the parnasa. Okay? So, in the middle of the week, take advantage and come if you really need. It's time of will. Do we really have to kiss the Sefer Torah? It's a great mitzvah. The Chazan Ish was not only kissing the Sefer Torah, it was hugging with both hands when they took Sefer Torah out of the ark and when they took it back two times. It was really makpid on that with both hands. Okay? Not the parchment, of course. Not the parchment, no. It's 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 the clo it's the it's when it's closed when it's closed when it's dressed up when it's dressed up with his coat we call it meil the coat. Um, so some has it's in the halacha. Some says Rabbi, I really want to kiss the sefer Torah, but you know Corona and hygiene. <laughs> I don't know what to do. What should I do? Can't you use your like siddur? So some says either sidu or with your tzitzit or with your hand. The Shla challenged that and says, are you guys kidding me? You, you're touching Sefer Torah and kissing your hand. You're giving honor to your hand. Mm. But most of the poskim says there's no problem because we do that on the tefillin anyways. We're kissing the hands. It's, the meaning is important. So what if you don't want to do, you don't even want to touch? So Rebel Yashiv used to do it from a distance. Mm. And we also answer a question for the woman. The women that are far away, they can do, in the women's section, they can do more far away, it's good enough. What's important is, here, here is the intention. kavana, the intention. Yeah, like you make efforts. Kissing a mezuzah when you want. Them. Exactly, yeah. mezuzah is another, another example. So, um, there's a question about mezuzah, and there, the, the Reb Chaim Kanyevsky says there's a difference between mezuzah and Sefer Torah, because mez, for Sefer Torah it's easy to tell, mezuzah, it, to, to kiss with your mouth, but mezuzah sometimes it's too high. You can't do that, okay? So the Mishnah Brura says it's a custom to bring kids to the Sefer Torah to kiss the Sefer Torah as part of Chinuch. We have to be careful that their half part of the body will be corresponded to the Sefer Torah and not with the legs. Sometimes they're lifting them too high and the legs of the, the baby is touching the, the, the Sefer Torah. It's mm -hmm. disrespectful. Or the, the, the diaper is dirty. It's another problem, okay? So you have to be careful with this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, questions? How ladies can 
do it from a distance? What do we do? We just point with your um, with your finger. If you're in a, in a reform a synagogue, you can use your talit that you have on you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, won't, I wouldn't be in the women's section. I'd be down there, you know. Right I would do that. <laughs> you got they me. They don't have a women's section. <laughs> I didn't say women's section. I said women's section. You can do with the talit. Okay, and wearing my yarmulke. Right? And there, there, you see th there's a difference okay. between okay. Some, sure. some people, okay. what they do <laughs> is they, they can hear me. I hope so. You did not mute yourself, did you? I don't know. So Rabbi, you muted yourself. Oh, I did? You didn't say anything? Well, they're muted. They're muted, and you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, yes. my good. I was all, all this time muted? I'm no, sorry. just for a couple seconds. Ah, okay, okay. So now you can hear me? Okay. Yes. So okay. You, you can see it later in the, in, 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 on the YouTube. Let me just... Answer what she said. There's two. There's a difference between uh, communities how they point out to Sefer Torah when it's open, when they do hagbe. Some go with the finger. Some will do with the pinky, and some will be, do with the tzitzit. There is a source for everything. I found another source for this with the pinky by Ben Yishai. Most of the opinion, Rav Chaim Palaji, and other opinion, it's with the finger, not with the pinky. Well, with the finger, because it says in the Torah, three places, when it says Zot, or Ze, Zot, like we said, Zot a Torah, Zot, when it says in the Torah, Hashem show him like a finger. Did you see the finger? Can I give it a second? In the Torah, in Sefer Torah, when you go up, there is a finger that they're pointing to you. Yeah. It's like that, it looks like that. Yeah. With yeah. the finger, it doesn't look like a yeah. pinky, right. like that. Yeah. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, had uh, troubles to understand three concepts, and Hashem showed him with the finger, a finger all of a sudden pointed to uh, a screen, and he could see what Hashem meant about the menorah, about the shratzim. Shratzim is the insects, insects, and a chodesh. They're about the, mo the moon, how the moon should look like when they do the bracha, in this shape, that shape, that line. So, and it's, I, as I mentioned before, it's hinted in Moshe's name. Mem, Shin, Hey. Mem, Menorah, Shin, Shiratzim, Hey, Ahodesh. The three things. And it was pointed with a finger. Therefore, the custom is to do with a finger. Okay, so you want to do with the binky? You can do It's fine. There's a source for it as well. It's connected to Sfirot and all that. So, some told me, but I want to do that too. So, tell them, do two. Do one, do one, do one. Do both. <laughs> you have to be creative. <laughs> that's it. That's the secret. So Levana wants to go up. all the way up to the bima. You want to come to the bima? Is that an invitation? <laughs> you can come after everyone left. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, will you be there mm -mm. to show me? Oh. Everyone left. Well, Question. Yes. You know, I noticed that I'm you are uh, accompanied when you walk behind <laughs> the uh, you know. Torah, the Sefer Torah. I'm sorry. And I can't hear you. Say again. You'll walk, but you personally will walk behind the uh, Sefer Torah from the Aron to the Bema, and then also back up when they're putting. You're talking about in. myself. Yes. And There's so a mitzvah not only to kiss the Sefer Torah; it's to escort the Sefer Torah to walk with it. It's a great mitzvah that you get. When you escort Sefer Torah, Hashem will pay your midah and neged midah, and Hashem will escort you in times of need. Okay? So, this is a great mitzvah. And this is how I grew up in the Yemenite community, uh, how to give uh, honor and respect to Sefer Torah. Any more questions? So, the other nations, see. You don't put your hands up, like, to receive the energy from You the can Torah. do that, too. Do that. I, I just offer okay. what the Mepharshim says in the comment. Okay. okay. So, the other nation was so amazed by this great ceremony and that the Israelite accepting Torah with joy nevertheless there's so many restrictions from this amazement or, or astonishment or uh, what did you say uh, the other word wonderment. wonderment from that alone they gave Ein Hara to it's answered the questions to Sefer Torah and the, the, the Tabat and the Brook it gives, by the way, it's answer another question. If you can give yourself Ainara, the answer is yes. You yourself amazed from what you were able to achieve. 
either a building that you build or you're counting your money or jewelry or whatever from that amazement you can give Ayinara to yourself wow. because you are creating times of din din is coming down judgment and trouble starts because Ayinara is always connected to the attribute of din judgment wow. the strict judgment it's called din okay Okay. I mean, question. Well, so, why can yeah. Hashem get angry you, with you the can give sorry, yourself Ainara if you say, wow, look at what I did. But uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's fine. But if you say, Hashem has been so great. Oh, that's the solution. You're offering solution. I didn't get to it yet. That, but that's and yeah, I will offer the answer later. Uh, that's the plan. So you already said that in order to fix that, you said, oh, oh, it's all from Hashem. Sometimes it's human nature to get excited from what you did, what you achieved, right? I said, oh, Baruch Hashem, it's all from Hashem. When you say it's all from Hashem, meaning you're submitting before God, you mean, it's, you're actually saying it's from Him, not from me. This is how you fix it, you rectify the issue. And did Hashem so. get angry at the Malachim for doing that? I didn't see that he was angry with them. So we've learned that we thought that this is the Egel and because of the golden calf. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? What happened in the golden calf? How many died? Okay, it's debatable among the Farshim. It's not clear if it was 3,000. Read the text, it's 3,000, but if you read the text carefully, you find out it's not 3,000. Because it was 3,000 that the Levim killed, plus people died in the plague, it says, mentioned about the plague, plus Moshe Rabbeinu gave them to drink from, what? The, the ground that burned golden calf to the water, like the shaking sota. What is a sota? Hmm? Adulterer, right? And that was that was like a, a, a lie detector back then. <coughs> it works 100%. No glitches. Woman. And Moshe Rabbeinu wants to see who... Some people dance, you know, around the golden calf. Some people, I guess, were happy to dance far away. Some dance in their own tent. Oh, thank you. So, nobody knows. But now when they drink it, oh. we'll find I saw that most of the Mepharshim says that all those who got affected by it is the Ha'am. Anytime he says Ha'am, every time he says Ha'am, it means the multitude, the Erev Lav. Mm -hmm. right? Any other word for Erev Lav? It's the other nation that joined the Israelite. So that was most of them. Interestingly enough to see that they dance around that they created it they punished but we suffer till today from the golden calf there is no generation till Mashiach comes that we don't get punished fracture fracture from the scene of the golden calf is that because we didn't stop them we acquiesce because why give, give me the one why why we we suffer today if this was the Erev Rav the other nation that we joined us we we Acquiesce, we tacitly agreed. They cooperated. How they cooperated? Remember, we've learned that we have responsibilities to each other. As long as they join, they just joined a few days ago to the Jewish nation. They They're become part of us. Them? That's it, finish. We're responsible. If they sin, you will be on you. Okay, so we don't take conversion lightly. We want to have, Bezat Hashem, people that are serious. They bring. Uh, blessing to the to the nation of Israel. So um, Bnei Israel didn't um, stand in the test. Okay, they were the test was that they will wait till Moshe Rabbeinu come, and with the dancing, with the golden calf, and the Ainara from the nation and from the angels. Uh, 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 they're broke. What happened with the with the angels? How is it possible that angels have evil inclination? So, long story short, it seems like the the Malachim 
have a little bit of Yetzirah. It's not just so active and it's not, they never challenge. But due to this great event, this, the, the golden calf, the Samech Mem, which is greater than the regular Malachim, all Malachim have up to six wings and he have 12. He, judgment immediately, you know, when they committed a sin, a line was open all the way to the Samech Mem and a lot of judgment came down the world, went through the Malachim, they affected by it, Yetzirah, they jealous, and it's, 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 it's like a chain reaction, things that happens in the world. Is the Samech Mem a Malach? Huh? Is the Samech Mem a Malach? It is, it is, but is there, even among the Malachim, there is levels, there are levels. The Ruchot, Malachim, Galgalim, Ufanim, Srafim, okay, there is levels. Kuvim, mm -hmm. right. Okay, any questions? Yeah, bye, bye, bye. So, due to jealousy and amazement, Midat Adin uh, awake, and this failure came down um, on Israel, and Ainara came with them. So, we close this issue. Um, what time is it? I have, okay. The next topic is that raise a lot of questions, is about Nadav ve'avihu. Why Nadav ve'avihu? Who, who is Nadav ve'avihu? Sons, Sons of Aaron. Why they died? They were tzaddikim. They were supposed to be the leaders after Moshe and Aaron. They walked behind Moshe and Aaron one day and they said, when these two elderly died, and so we can take control. They did it in a, in, in, in a good way, meaning they have a good intention, meaning they thought that Moshe and Aaron were a little bit too soft on the people. Because they were too soft, you know, there's golden calf, there's people challenging Moshe Rabbeinu every now and then. We're going to show them how, you know, to run business. It's going to be tough. And they were qualified. I mean, they were great tzaddikim, but yet they died. How they died? A two strings of fire, spiritual fire, came through their nose, took the neshama, yes. and took it out. Okay, so they were burned from the inside. Their clothing were complete. So we know that they died due to what happened? They went into the what did they do? They offered something they were not supposed to. The Mishnah, that, I'm sorry, the Talmud brings and the Midrash a list of six things, ten things that they messed it up. They came in shtuyayin, meaning they drunk. Drunk doesn't mean that they're drunk. Even if you do bore priyagef and take a sip, you all of a sudden you, you right now you consider drunk because you're drunk. Wine, it doesn't matter the amount. You're not supposed to go to serve in the Beit HaMikdash even with taking a sip of wine. You're not 100% now, you're 99%. And they offer things they were not supposed to before that. They had good intention, but yet they suffered the consequences. So we all know that it went because it's due to their uh, uh, behavior. Any Ainara here involved? We never heard something like that. Listen to this. It says in the Midrash the following. You know why Avraha, why Nadav and Avihu died? Every time we see another case and we see where it started, it always started with Ainara. Ainara came, judgment came down, and then they're messing it up. Take a sip, saying this, not supposed to say anything, offering things, not supposed to. It's all started with Ainara. But what, when was Ainara here? Give a lie, when? So the Midrash says the following. The Midrash is... Okay. Amru ba Midrash says the Midrash Lizher ine shume eina bisha Say one should be very careful from evil eye. What happened? It was a lady. Her name is Elisheva bat Aminadav. Who is Elisheva? 
the wife of Aaron. Who is Aminadav? Her father. Who is Nachshon? Ben Aminadav? Her brother. Who was her brother-in-law? Moshe. Her children. Tzadikim, Nadav, she's surrounded with great people. Tzadikim, righteous, top of the top. The Midrash says, be careful from Ayinara. For what? What happened? The Ha says, Elisheva, but I mean, Nadav, one day, she saw, in one day, she saw her husband, Aharon, become Kohen Gadol. Who was supposed to be the Kohen Gadol? Moshe. Moshe. How do you know that? Oh, you come to the Shiur on Shabbat. Moshe Rabbeinu was supposed to be the Kohen Gadol. Why he lost it? Aaron was supposed to be Levi. Moshe, because Moshe Rabbeinu didn't agree. Hashem has to ask him six times, go, say, go speak with Paro. So after six times, he says, you know what? You lost your... Um, huh? Keuna. The opportunity, the Kehuna. I want to give the Kehuna that was supposed to go to you, to Aaron, and you'll be a Levi. So sometimes, even the Torah teachers, don't be too, too tzaddik. No, they don't listen to me. No, you were too modest. Hashem is telling you to go. You don't argue with Hashem, period. But that, but that was not much his nature. Anyways, she saw that one day her husband became Kohen Gadol. Moshe, her, her, her brother-in-law, is already considered the king of Israel. Her brother, Nachshon, become the head of the Nisim, the whole tribes, the whole presidents. Her two sons, Nadav and Avihu, they are the deputies of the high priest. Sganekuna. And the women around her started to talk. Did you see this Elishama? Raitem batami Nadav. Wow. She's something. She's something else. So the women around her Start to talk, a little bit jealousy, finish. Someone will get hurt. Who got hurt? The one that had probably the least zchuyot. Doesn't have enough. Who doesn't have enough? Nadav Aviyu. Venichnesa ba'enayinara came down and mixed with the joy of that great day. Aaron was really sad. He was crying and he was screaming and Moshe comforting him. And he says, Hashem is taking the best of the best for a reason. Hashem knows what he's doing. And Hashem is very strict with the righteous. For a small little mistake, you're going to pay a high price. Versus other people. So it all, the whole mess and punishment started with Ainara. But let me ask you something. Is, is that her fault? She's married to Aharon. Her brother-in-law is Moshe. Her two sons... Tzadiki, deputies began. Then. Can you help me out here? Well, like if you remember, say, of the British royal family, and somebody in the royal family does something, it will reflect on you. Like what happened with Queen Elizabeth, you know? Uh, she had to try to control her grandsons and her sons. And so what are you saying? Well, th 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 this, th it's, th not, it's not other shepherds. That's reality. It's, that's my husband. That's my son. My brother-in-law. That's my son. What do you want me to do? It's better if they were wicked. Maybe not talk about it. I don't know. I don't know. She so, didn't do it. huh? The ladies did. Mm. The ladies. Okay. 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 So, what what caused the lady to talk about it? Jealousy. Jealousy. Who created jealousy? Elisheva? No. The situation, the fact that yes, she, she was, was in it, but it wasn't her fault. So but sometimes it's not your fault. It. it is what it is. Yeah. You have to pray to Hashem to save you from my inara. Nevertheless, you don't do anything about it. You didn't do it. I, I, what do you mean to hide the kids in the house? It is what it is. You see the power of Ainara? Sometimes you do nothing. Just the fact that you're married to this guy and you're in a certain family. You get Ainara for that. You have to be careful. But it says they died because they messed it up with the service. They offered something they were not supposed to. There's a whole list. 
I saw an answer about it saying that they were not supposed to die. But because Ayn Ra brought down a heavy judgment, a heavy midat uh, adin, um, a tribute of judgment, then they got punishment in the most severe punishment of death. Okay, next. Have nine minutes. A remedy, remedy for Ainara. One of the remedies. At the very end, we're going to learn the Zashem all the tricks. Garlic. Just want you to know, <laughs> garlic is very good really? because people are going to get distance from you. They don't see you. They don't give you Ainara. <laughs> So, um, b there is something, there's a remedy for Aina. I, I just want to tell you that people, I see that people do the test of Aina that we mentioned. And unfortunately, I would say 90% find out that they have Aina. So, I uh, <coughs> recommend you to check, do the test, it's very simple. And there is a way to fix it, Bezat Hashem. I still get pictures from people that they are uh, sending me. Well, oh, I wanted to mention that if you take a picture of the cap, don't take it from top, from the side, side so I can see anything <laughs> sunk. Okay. Moving forward. One of the remedies, and if this remedy is related to someone that sits here. More than one guy that sits here. Nothing to do with CP. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something called Smichut Parashiyot. When Parasha, Parasha is close to each other. Ah, huh? that's the position? Juxtaposition. 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 There is the Torah, when Hashem gave us the Torah, even if you see a Parasha that have nothing to do with the other parsha. there is connection to the parshiot. Why I'm saying that? It's always come to teach us something. Rabbi Yochanan says in the Tractate Brachot, Simuchin min Torah minayin. As it says, Simuchin la'ad le'olam asuim be'emet v'yashar. It's hinted in the Torah. When you see parashot, portions of the Torah, you think they're not related, they're related, and there's a reason why they are there. Rashi says, Velo davarek. It's not an empty thing. It's a hidden, high secret behind it. Why I'm saying that? Because, listen to this. The Israelite was supposed, were commanded to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle. Correct? Mm -hmm. What's the Mishkan? It's the temporary temple. The Shekhinah. Shekhinah can dwell there, and so forth and so forth. Okay, we have there <coughs> the ark and the, 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 the altars and all that. And the Kohanim will serve is there, the, the Levi, fine. In order to protect the Mishkan from Ainara, you see that the Birkat Kohanim, the blessing, the Parsha about the Kohanim blessing, is attached to a Parsha that talks about building the Mishkan. And our sages learn that the blessing of the Kohanim protect from Ainara. Do we have any Kohanim here today? Two of them. Why did you say it has nothing? There's two of them. <laughs> You're the family of Kohanim? Ah, okay. No, <laughs> because you can't do Birkat Kohanim in the show. No. My boys. So we have two Kohanim here, Andrew and Mark. That uh, anytime you give Birkat Kohanim, you know you give protection to the people of Israel. Sephardim and Yemenite have Birkat Kohanim every day. Israel, outside of the land of Israel. Ashkenazim, it's only on holidays, right? Not even Shabbat. So, any questions? I'm going to skip all this part. I just want to tell you, it's talking about the yeah. Bottom line, let me, cut, let me summarize it and we'll finish with this part. Okay. Oh, wow, wow. That was the next time. Um, when the Bnei Israel built the Bet HaMishkan, Koshboch gave him the brachot of the Kohanim first. There is a rule in Hashem's creation. 
הקדוש ברוך הוא always מקדים תרופה למכה. שהם always create a remedy before the punishment, the strike or whatever you want to call it. Meaning, every strike that we feel in our personal life, you should know the remedy is already there. You just need to find it. With tefillah, maybe with tzedakah, consult with your rabbi, whatever. The remedy is already there. You just need to find it. Because this is how Hashem created the world. And this is one of the signs. Before the verses in the Torah about the tabernacle, the mishkan, we have the blessing of the Kohanim to teach you Remedy is there. The protection is there. And we go knock on their door and say... You should. The, the first time is free, after that you're charging them. <laughs> you take a... Right. You take a okay, the next part, Be'ezrat Hashem, we will talk about uh, Am Israel and Bilam. Bilam wants to uh, strike Israel in three different levels. What are the three levels of Ainara? One of them is physical, the other one... Uh, okay, we'll talk about Hashem next time. Any questions? They can they protect each other? Or are they protected by definition? We go to the rabbi. It, it all depends if the Kohen followed Torah and the mitzvot. You know, sometimes it could be a Kohen, you could be tzaddik, but you are prevented from giving bracha. You can't go and give berkat kohanim. Why? Someone that kills. He killed someone. He could even accidentally he killed someone an accident in the car. At this point on, he cannot go and do Birkat Kohanim anymore. So that raises another question. What if nobody knows? And it's a, it's a problem, okay? There's, uh, anyways. So the Kohanim we have here, Andrew and Mark, qualified 100%. All right. <laughs> we blessed to have them. Any questions? Yes. What if you touch the part of him, the part with their hand? You need to go to the mikvah. You can go to the mikvah, it's a good thing to do. But you have to uh, do tshuva for that and fix it. You know, when they, sometimes they're taking Sefer Torah from one place to another in order not, because there's a lot of halachot about Sefer Torah. You know, these crazy people that dance with Sefer Torah. Let's say I want to take Sefer Torah to Eret Israel. I want to take Sefer Torah from one place to another. Uh, all the way to the land of Israel. One of the tricks they do in order not to mess it up, they open the Sefer Torah, they open the parchment, and there is a, what do you call the string that they sew it between the parchment, the open few. As soon as you do that, you d disqualify it. It's not Sefer Torah kosher anymore. So now, if God forbid on the flight you mess it up, you, it's, it's considered like a regular book. When they go to Eretz Israel and they fix it and they come back here, they sew it back again. It's not, uh, it's not coming, it's easy to do. And just to show how important it is to treat Sefer Torah with respect. Otherwise, you can bring upon yourself uh, uh, great, uh, horrible things. Okay, in one hand it's precious, in the other hand, you have to be very careful with Torah. As we've learned, and we, we conclude with that, Torah can be remedy and, and refuah, and, but Torah can be also like a poison. Poison. It's a refuah of those who keep it, and it's a poison those who uh, disgrace it or uh, those who... Huh? Mistreated. Mistreated, right. So, Bez Hashem, wish everyone here that we be blessed to fulfill the Torah uh, on a daily basis to please Hashem, and Hashem will bless us with great livelihood and good health and long life, so we can observe his Torah, keep his Torah, and teach his Torah to others. Amen. Toda Rabba. I uh, must say Toda Rabba to the Goldstein's family for opening such a beautiful table. I want to show you what kind of treats they, 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 woo! Wow, wow, I, I never get the chance to enjoy, but I'm sure you guys enjoy from it. God bless you all. See you, Be'ezrat Hashem. On uh, Tuesday, we have the Alachot. Next Sunday, I know I'm out of town. So in two weeks. No. In two weeks, Mazat Hashem.